WBNE. Hello and welcome to episode 180, all about the best of 2022, being the 180th part of That's What I'm Talking About. My name is Mary Clay. If that's too complicated for you, just call me MC. And Happy New Year, everyone. Happy 2023. We have made it once again to another year on the calendar. Otherwise, time is a flat circle and it doesn't really matter. Anyway, today we're taking a look back at 2022, some of the highlights and amazing moments that we experienced. And next week, we will return to the regular episode format where there's a guest on, we talk Tolkien things, and it's all wonderful. Thank you so much for hanging in there as I took a couple breaks throughout the month of December. Usually I'm able to plan ahead for the podcast and the holidays so that I'm still able to release episodes, but this year it just got a little bit busier than usual and I wasn't able to do that. So again, thank you so much for understanding that. I don't know why, but I thought I was going to get flooded with hate mail or something like that, and that didn't happen. Of course it didn't happen because you're wonderful people. So what exactly are we covering next week? Well, I'll tell you. It's the appendices. That's right. The thing that I thought I could skip without consequence, because truth be told, when I finished reading Return of the King, I just didn't want to keep reading. I was done reading and I was ready to move on to the movies. The thing that I thought I just didn't have to read. And then lo and behold, that's the entire thing that the Amazon show ended up being based on. It's all fine because we're coming back to it now. You know, we're coming back to it. When have we ever done anything conventional on this show? So next week, And probably the week after that, and maybe even the week after that, and maybe even the week after that, we're doing the appendices because that's another mistake I made is that I thought, oh yeah, we'll just sit down and talk about the appendices for one episode. Nope, it's like 200 pages. It's a full book. So yeah, next week, the appendices. And this week, we are looking back at 2022. So let's go on a journey down memory lane. Was that a good time travel sound effect? Starting off with the first episode of 2022, and what actually might be my favorite episode of the year, was the Lord of the Rings musical with Allie Gordon. This was genuinely such a fun topic for me to like dive down the rabbit hole of and watch this bootleg and listen to the music and read all these like horror stories of all the injuries that were happening on the cast and just, you know, learn the story of this failed West End musical of Lord of the Rings. Just speaking of the the turntable and the stage and stuff, it might have been in the National Geographic special or a different video where someone was talking about the stage and how when you start the story, you're in the Shire, everything's completely flat, completely still. And as they go on the, further on this journey and get more into danger, the stage is doing more things where first it starts with it. It's just a turntable and they're just walking. And then parts of it start rising as, you know, more intense action is coming to the point where in Helm's Deep, there are all these different platforms on different levels and they're all moving. Yeah, and, and like Urukai are jumping from platform to platform. And it's like, yeah, it's on, on the bouncy still <laughs> chaotic. And yeah. I was just like, that's really, that's really brilliant that they're like able to do something so much and say so much about a theater story just with the way that like you create the set and the stage yeah it's really cool like it's one of those things where it's like it's much it's very easy to say like i just wish the musical was better because like what they built around it is spectacular yeah so that that's why as we i think probably move towards wrapping up this conversation <laughs> now i think that like this is a musical that is a and a lot of the like reviews that i was reading talked about this too that like this was a really big spectacle to behold and to like witness with your own eyes and be like that's amazing but like when you looked at the finer details you're like actually it didn't really make a lot of sense <laughs> no and it's like it's like what i said earlier of just like if you're like a mega fan you're probably going to be disappointed because inevitably it will disappoint you with one of your favorite moments being cut or one of your whole favorite characters being cut do you know what i yeah. mean like i know that there's a person out there who's like where was worm tongue do you know what i mean like just like one person who's like the world's I mean, biggest fan I was of worm tongue like, where's bill the pony exactly where is you bill know the pony? but do you know what i'm we saying like, had, you know what you know what they should have done here i am talking about 
about like, oh, they had all these amazing puppets and animatronics and like silk sheet <laughs> effects to make like the river. And for Bill the Pony, it just should have been classic two guys in a horse costume. I thought you were going to say, just get a real horse on stage. Or just get a real <laughs> I was horse. Like, oh, okay. No, it should be two actors in a horse costume. One of them, you know, bent over. Yeah. I would say walking. that because they're not that important anyway, and the reveal of them wasn't even that exciting, I think we should introduce Bill the Pony, and then suddenly we find out it was Mary, Pippi- Mary and Pippin sharing a costume. And it was, <laughs> oh it was never Bill the Pony all oh along. Oh my god! And they're just like, hey, we were following you. We dressed up as your horse gotcha and then they're on the journey with them that's my pitch (laughs) oh that's excellent (laughs) because they don't really do anything else after that so they might as well have a fun little entrance (laughs) what good times those were hey you want to know what else was fun releasing episodes on the soviet union era adaptations of the hobbit and lord of the rings at the same time that russia was invading ukraine Let's take a look back at that, shall we? And then in one clear advantage, we also get Tom Bombadil. Yes. So they go back into the forest after stopping with Farmer Maggot and get to the old forest. And this is when I was like, oh, my God, are we about to see the man, the myth, the legend? And so they they stop by this tree and they're getting like taken over by a spell and they all fall asleep and then Mary gets eaten by the tree. And the the, the what it's like being they're being told like relax, leave your problems, but it's a very weird series of dialogue, right? Like I can't remember exactly. And there's wording. also like someone they've made like tree like branch puppet hands and so there's someone like behind the tree with these like puppet hands on who's like grabbing at them through the tree (laughs) i'm reminded of like the gremlins when they needed the gremlins to grab something you see this clearly prop arm come in it's like exactly that like it's just a prop arm you see like that some guy's just holding uh, just off camera (laughs) oh my gosh and so then i think frodo's like "What? what who do i hear is that singing who's singing here he is, our homeboy, Tommy B. Tom Bombadil is in the house. And the the, the digital effect here probably looks the weakest, which is saying a lot with them in the Tom Bombadil scene, at least for me. What do you I thought it was excellent. What do you mean? <laughs> Well, like, if you look at He just kind of, like, phases, like, in and out of existence. (laughs) Which, hey, he's a god, basically. He He can can do do that, that, right? (laughs) But just, just, I was just like, you know what? It makes a lot of sense that Tom Bombadil, he didn't show up in the 1978 Ralph Bakshi Lord of the Rings. He doesn't show up in Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. Not even the extended edition. But here he is in the 1991 Soviet Union adaptation. The fact that this is just eight years before Peter Jackson and know, less right? so for him filming is just amazing and adorable. Right. Um, oh my god. And I, I couldn't help but like so their sight lines are constantly struggling like because they're trying to do these digital effects. Oh, People so are just funny. looking in the wrong direction. And what's so great is if you compare that to the brilliant usage of camera angles and stuff to make you know Frodo look like he's looking at Gandalf and all that when they're like you're being forced perspective. It's just there's something beautiful in the comparison. <laughs> and yeah, you're I'm so glad that you brought up that like this is very close in time to when Peter Jackson would have been like preparing for Lord of the Rings. I think he was even maybe campaigning by this point. Like he's but he yeah. worked on that for a long time. Or at least definitely at the time that this aired. I don't know how far in advance they... I don't know what the the editing process was like, if that took significantly longer than the filming. But there's like no, you know, clever tricks with forced perspective or anything. They literally just like shrink the hobbits down and then like put them, like superimpose them in front of Tom Bombadil, who's like normal sized. It looks ridiculous, but it's excellent at I, the same time. I will say it's a creative usage of green screens. They they got yes. their work out of green oh, yeah. screens. Oh, yeah. If that was the budget, it was well spent. So Tom Bombadil invites them back to his house 
and we see Goldberry, y'all. It's Goldberry. I'm so hype about these two. And she looks almost exactly like how I would expect Goldberry to look. And she's acting exactly how I would expect her to act. It's great. There's like one point where they're sitting down to eat and the hobbits are like, okay, we're ready for dinner. And she's like, have you washed your hands yet? And they're like, <laughs> no. So they have to go and wash their hands and then they come back and then they like hold up their hands to show that they're clean like children. <laughs> Never mind that Frodo is, you know, decades and decades old. It's just, it's yes, adorable. That, yeah, that like they're adults, but whatever. And re- remember, they've been shrunk down to the size of like Oompa Loompas, you know? I just love that the Soviet adaptation had the guts to go where Peter Jackson didn't. <laughs> yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, Peter, there are all these comments in the uh, in the YouTube video that's like, Peter Jackson's been real quiet since this came out. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I got to say, it was almost worth it to watch the Soviet adaptations if it meant that I finally got to see Tom Bombadil on the big screen. We also finally got to take a stab at fan fiction. That's right, that shadowy corner of fandom that we have no need to be ashamed of because it brings us such gems as The Very Secret Diaries by Cassandra Clare. Yes, that Cassandra Clare. We're actually going to, uh, we're going to read together the first entry uh, in full. This is the very secret diary of Aragorn, son of Arathorn. We won't read every entry for every character. Um, I have pulled p- bits and pieces, but this one I feel like it's short enough. Um, it introduces us to the to the world, the the vibes, you know. Um, and personally, this is just the one that made me laugh the most. And I was like, I can't pick just one thing to read because I feel like it all works better when you read the whole thing. <clears throat> Let me get my best narrator. <laughs> voice going <laughs> <All right. laughs> day one ring wraiths killed four v good met up with hobbits walked 40 miles skinned a squirrel and ate it still not king day four stuck on a mountain with hobbits or mirror really annoying not king yet day six orcs killed none disappointing stubble update i look rugged and manly yes keep wanting to drop kick Gimli, holding myself back. Still not king. <laughs> Day 10. Sorry no entries lately. V dark in Mines of Moria. Big Balrog. Not king today either. Day 11. Orcs killed. 7. V good. Stubble update. Looking mangy? Legolas may be hotter than me. I wonder if he would like me if I was king? Day 28. Beginning to find Frodo disturbingly attractive. Have a feeling if I make a move, Sam would kill me. Also, hairy feet, kind of a turnoff. Still not king. Day 30, in Lothlorien. Think Galadriel was hitting on me. Saucy wench. (laughs) Nice chat with Boromir. He's not so bad. Took a shower. Yay! But still not king. Day 32, or killed? None. Stubble update? Subtly hairy. Legolas told me that a shadow and a threat had been growing in his mind. I think Legolas might be kind of gay. Nope. Not king. Day 33. Orcs killed. Countless thousands. Be good. (laughs) Bormo killed by orcs. Bummer. Though he died bravely in my arms, I'm now quite sure that he was very definitely gay. (laughs) Not so sure about Gimli either. R.I.P. Bormir. Still not king, but at least Bormir seemed to think I was. Might, however, have been the blood loss. (laughs) Day 34. Frodo went to Mordor, said he was going alone, but took Sam with him. Why? My God, is everyone in this movie gay but me? Not so sure about me either. Still not king. (laughs) God damn it. (laughs) So that is the entry of Aragorn, son of Arathorn, and things progress from here. Um, I appreciate the stubble update. I appreciate the um, fixation on whether or not he's king yet mm-hmm. yeah i love the i love the still not king i also still really not king. Like, boromir killed by orcs bummer, bummer. <laughs> which might be like the best tagline <laughs> for well, the I, fellowship I that, that i can imagine it's preceded by uh let me find it orcs killed countless thousands v good <laughs> 
<laughs> Boromir killed by orcs. Bummer. <laughs> And finally, after a lot of time talking about doing it, I did an episode about memes. The next major one is they're taking the hobbits to <gasps> Isengard. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was, that has been around for a while, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is one of my favorite meme formats because like this has been reworked so many times and it's funny every time. Yeah. Yeah. Th like this. And again, this was okay. So on August 18th, 2005, artist Erwin Beekveld submitted a video titled They're Taking the Hobbits to Isengard to the Flash website Albino Black Sheep. Oh, my I am gosh. actually I yeah, I am. I am actually familiar with Albino Black Sheep. Oh, this is like my childhood. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah. Dude, yeah. Oh so, my God. The amount of recovered memories just from hearing that name. That, yeah. Right. It was later like uploaded to YouTube by various people. And so like that's how it spread. And I tried very hard. I internet stalked Erwin Beekfeld and that's tried so very funny. hard to find a way to contact him because I wanted to talk to him about creating this video. And I think I found his work email, but I decided oh, no. <laughs> to not. I was like, that seems like a boundary. I shouldn't cross. Yeah. Oh. Like I looked him up on LinkedIn. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm surprised he's like not more online considering. Yeah. So Erwin, if you're listening, <laughs> I'd love to have you on and talk about this. Um, but yeah, this uh, idea of remixing movie lines and stuff into like a musical video is something that was very popular in you know mid 2000s also kind of you know goes hand in hand with like the concept of auto-tuning and so that that goes in you know that goes into yeah. the what's the he's climbing in your windows snatching your people up you know oh, yeah. so like yes oh my gosh what a good example the one that came to mind when I first heard about this video I had never heard they're taking the hobbits to Isengard until I did this podcast. When someone first told me about it, I was like, oh, is that like the why is the rum gone video? Someone remixed Pirates of the Caribbean with all these different lines and like sounds just from the movie into like a song. And so it's very similar in nature. That video, ha and to the point where I thought they were made by the same people, but it, that was made a couple years later by a different person. So it's very possible that they're taking the Hobbits to Isengard, like kicked off this trend, you know? Yeah, I, it's, I think so. Like, now, like thinking back, that timeline makes so much sense to me because I was there, you know, I was there and I was in I was it. There. What does Elrond there? say? I was there 3,000 years, <laughs> years ago, ago or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, another notable thing about this is that on June 29th, 2013, Lord of the Rings director Peter Jackson uploaded a video in which Orlando Bloom, dressed as Legolas, sings along with taking the, Ob the Hobbits to Isengard. <laughs> Do Isengard, do Isengard, do Isengard. And this was filmed, I believe, on either his last day or towards the end of filming The Hobbit. And so Orlando Bloom got in on the joke. And I love that, like, sa same with Sean Bean saying, like, yeah, this meme is my legacy. I love that the cast and, like, Peter Jackson are all, like, they fully embrace all of these, like, internet memes that come I out. love that so much. And it, in a weird way, lends to, like, the wholesomeness of Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. You know, that the cast, like, gets it. They're not offended. They're not like, this is my art. They, like, appreciate the fan-made content, no matter how weird it is. And, like, they're on yeah. board. It's just, like, ah, oh, it's so good. I love that. Right. There's still an open invitation, by the way, for the creator of They're Taking the Hobbits to Isengard. Erwin, if you're listening, please hit me up. I'd love to discuss it with you. Of course, then I could put it off no longer. After literal years of saying I would never cover it, I finally had to leave behind the silly world of musicals and fan fiction and memes and begin the Silmarillion.
So, and the Silmarillion deals with all of that. But yes, the Silmarillion I've reads heard. like the King James Bible. <laughs> and if you thought there were a lot of characters. I was right going to say, it's funny you say that because someone else said it reads like a Bible. Yeah. So, it's, it's, it's very much which, like, like I'm sure, the, I'm sure to Tolkien, the it, Middle like, Earth Bible was his Bible. Yeah. <sighs> that just feels unnecessary. Yeah. Like, do I need to know all of that in order? to oh my god Books. listeners like i don't know if i'm gonna do all that an, an encyclopedia yeah, i don't so, think that would be exciting and i, I don't also, think anyone would have fun I, yeah i don't think <laughs> and then ethan and tyler also tell me that i i'm obligated to read anything that has tolkien's name on it we will see what happens with the silmarillion i still have no idea i've got the three fourths of two towers and four fourths of return of the king as well as all of the Hobbit and, and all of the Silmarillion and all. The, uh, um, we will talk we'll, about we'll that. We'll talk about that <laughs> at a later date. But no, the real question is that. like, are you doing the rest of Tolkien's works? <sighs> that's what like we're gonna have. To but like, he doesn't. Have that's works the that milestone matter. conversation, <laughs> right? I feel like the Silmarillion is like the end of the gray area. And then, like, I'm not saying you have to do the Silmarillion. Maybe that's the entrance to the gray area. I can only imagine how much harder it will be to find guests who are willing to read this obscure work of Tolkien that is incredibly d- dry and dense. Tom Bombadil. Mike loves Tom Bombadil. Like he's, he's got a fun name. He's a merry fellow and he's yellow boots. So He is an enigma. So is he in the... Silmarillion? Sil- Silmarillion. Is he in Silmarillion? Silmarillion? I don't know. I haven't um I haven't read it. I'm actually dreading <laughs> I don't I haven't decided if I'm gonna cover it yet mm. or not on, on the podcast because it's literally a Bible and it's a, also a history book. That's what people say about the Bible. It's like oh, it's not interesting enough. You should add a history textbook to it. <laughs> That'll make it more fun. <laughs> I was gonna say actually I think I'd rather read the Bible and a history textbook than read the Silmarillion. <laughs> <laughs> What now? I don't know. That's good question. That's what I'm, I'm watching. Hobbit movies. I'm watching The Hobbit um, until when's that TV show come out? All they've said is it's a projected premiere of late 2021, and that's all we know. And and they've released such a vague synopsis of it. So we're just gonna get like one episode for the whole Silmarillion? No, it's not about the Silmarillion. What do you mean one episode for the whole Silmarillion? Isn't that it's next? A, it's a it's a series. I, no, I know, but don't you have to read that? Oh, no. Yeah, I'm not gonna... <laughs> no. <laughs> well, here's the thing. <laughs> I'm I'm definitely not going to read the Silmarillion before I watch the Amazon series. Hello, my name is Mary Clay. If that's too complicated for you, just call me MC. I've been experiencing the world of J.R.R. Tolkien for the first time, and right now I am reading the Silmarillion so you don't have to. I I I knew in d- doll nope nope that was a valiant Dude, effort I, I was just cl- not even going to try you got the first you got the first syllable down you're almost there <laughs> I knew I I knew knew in da- da- see I want to say Dale but <laughs> I know it's not Dale Mr. Worldwide it, that's what okay <laughs> that's what I was wondering I was like there's no way it's Dolly that's isn't Pitbull no, it's Dolly yeah <laughs> okay so I knew I kn- <laughs> You're doing great. I didn't even try in our podcast. I was just like, Paul. <laughs> 17 minutes in, we're stuck on the first word. <laughs> going great. Paul, would you like to pronounce it for us? Uh, I, again, now that... <laughs> no pressure, crossed, Paul. <laughs> I, I'm worried now that I'm going to say it, <laughs> that Don's going to be like, actually, that's incorrect. And I'm like, oh, no. Um, it's I've always pronounced it as Aino uh, Right. That sounds exactly. so beautiful. It, Exactly. Yeah. Uh huh. That's it, totally what I said. Yeah. Here, well, you, you, <laughs> when you edit this, you can put. All right. Now I'm gonna say it, and then you just kind of edit my voice into exactly. it, and you're like, "Oh, I got um, it." <laughs> Thanor. It's this is where I started being like, I'm a little, I'm a little suspicious of what, of who the like. I don't know who this guy is, but. Uh, yeah, I wrote, I, d- I just don't know if Feanor is going to be good, mm-hmm. bad, chaotic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yeah, just the the, the mm-hmm, nodding. Um, because it says, <laughs> few ever changed his courses by counsel, none by force. That sounds like not the kind of person that like you want to be a potential leader of, of these people, you know, so like... In in the future, that does sound logical. Yeah, yeah. 
just the vague statements <laughs> from y'all. I gotta give content, I but I, there's only so much. <laughs> um, he it says the most subtle in mind. I don't know what that means. Does that just mean he's dumb? Or I, t- I take it. I, that's an interesting point. I thought it was like. I guess maybe that is what that means. I just thought like you know he was so clever like you can't like you can't even watch see him move like you you know like the most subtle and yeah. that's interesting yeah maybe he's really cunning yeah and that's crafty. what I thought maybe but actually the maybe saying I'm like maybe it just mean he's just unintelligent I could see it that way too maybe that maybe that yeah I with even with more context I'm not yeah like it's not way. I'm like okay I don't you could it depends that that's such a loaded question because I'm like well how does Tolkien view <laughs> Feanor is the real question so I don't know right. interesting okay we'll circle back to that <laughs> um <laughs> and he is most skilled in hands uh it is he who discovered how gems greater and brighter than those of the earth might be made with skill See, that's smart so he is just right yeah yeah, yeah crap mm-hmm. or crafty yeah. maybe somebody one of your listeners knows i'm picturing him i'm picturing him not because he's this could be really loaded but i'm imagining him to be a slytherin already mm. you don't have to say anything but i'm just mm. taking it in with what you know like that's interesting because like i don't know just the subtle in mind i'm really like thinking about that too hard i'm gonna move past it anyway We come to chapter 14 of Beleriand and its realms. And I was warned about this chapter um, by some previous guests who said like, oh, yeah, there's this one chapter that's just all about maps. And (laughs) I didn't at the time I was like, oh, that sounds boring, but I'm sure it won't be that bad. Um, I like literally the first like three sentences. I was like, oh, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do well with this chapter Luckily, at all. it's pretty short. I think that's the one thing it's got going for it. That it's it not... felt too long to me. <laughs> <laughs> like you get to the end. Like, it could have oh, been longer. It could have been, it could have been longer. Talking, that's true. Yes, it could have been longer. Yeah. Th- like this chapter broke me. That broke me. I'm, I'm done. It truly broke me. I made it to okay. So, so the main problem, or not the main problem, one of the things that like truly broke me uh-huh. is that in this first chapter, it's talking about Angband mm-hmm. and Melkor and his, you know, fortress and Autumno, and it's in the it just references Arid Engren, the Iron Mountains. In this one paragraph, it mm-hmm. says Arid Engren, like five times and so i'm trying to flip back and forth and find it on the map and i couldn't find it and i'm google searching come to find out the iron mountains are not on this map at all yeah they are so they are much more north north of everything yeah um and so that's kind of when i really lost it is because i had spent like 15 minutes (laughs) staring at my book trying to be like which mountain are the iron mountains not the shadowy mountains right not the oh, echoing everything mountains always has three names so you don't always know because like what oh he refers God. to in the paragraph might not be what it's called on the map and you're like yes what? yes oh my gosh and sometimes it, it'll be the sindar name and sometimes yep. it's the noldor name yeah. which i find interesting yeah and um I just like I, there was one point where I was just reading the same sentence over and over trying to picture things in my head and like I I promise y'all I try I went into this with such an open mind I was like it's gonna be great it's gonna be fine I'm gonna pull up a map it's gonna be fine we're gonna be organized yep. and I, I could not do it I lost it and this is where I I, I was like tweeting I was making TikToks <laughs> I was losing my mind and yeah. I was I think I have transitioned into I think the Silmarillion is actually the worst because I have really <laughs> truly been trying to give it yeah a an fair open shot, mind yeah. a fair shot but like it necessitates every one of my brain cells <laughs> and I have none left at yeah. this point this so, is the chapter I wouldn't blame people for giving up on like I always think like oh you just gotta get past that part you just gotta get past that part and then you get here and you're like 
So, uh, yes, he he wanders into the the past the girdle of Melian into the forest of Doriath, and there, just like Aragorn and Arwen do, he spots her afar in the middle of a forest. And as I've said before, hot women wandering through the forest is a common theme in many of Tolkien's yes. books. Um, and of course, he instantly falls in love with her because that's how relationships work, kids. You can it look is. at someone in the middle of a deserted forest and fall in love with them and it's not creepy. I'm lying, of course, but, you know, this is how fairy tales work. So, Ladies out there, I highly recommend not going deep into a forest and... If you see a man, run. Run. Opposite direction. Even if you're not in a forest, if you just see a man. See a man. Just in general. <laughs> just run. the opposite direction. <laughs> well, daddy is gone and there's nobody to reel them in. I don't think Feanor ever did that, though. <laughs> I, there, was, there was a certain power dynamic between the father and the sons. And now that I the father so, yeah. is gone, the sons are like, well, who's, who's in charge now? Who do we? What? Da, da, oh, you dad's. You know what? This this situation reminds me of a bit, and maybe it's just because I started rewatching the show. Kind of reminds me of of the Bluths in Arrested Development. Oh my <laughs> where god! The patriarch goes to jail, and the not even the oldest son, but the most responsible son, is like trying to take charge of this family, and and keep all these chaotic siblings and family members on track. Is Arrested and Development just a modern adaptation of the Silmarillion? Of the Silmarillion <laughs> <laughs> of Fano- of the the family of Feanor, yeah. Um, probably not a one to one, but like just very similar to me, where like you, there's no family figure trying to keep everyone you know in line Mm -hmm. any you know and and try as michael bluth might he i guess in this case is is like made the roast where he admit he was like i'm stepping but like i'm not you know we kind of lost our leadership privileges when we killed (laughs) our people everybody so i don't you know uncle fingolfin why don't you be king instead um, and like recognizing that and having some taking some responsibility and accountability for your actions. Can I get Ron Howard to narrate the Silmarillion for me? Oh my god! Can I? For those that haven't watched Arrested Development, the comedic it's timing. So it's such a good show. Ron Howard is the narrator, and he chimes in as the narrator pretty much like two or three times an episode in the most perfect ways imaginable. And I can just. No, Michael. He mailed the letter. That's not the point. Job had not mailed the letter, but in an act of defiance, dramatically hurled the letter into the sea. It's like, I will get that silver rail. He didn't. That reminds me, I need to look up that scene where the doctor comes out and is like, You said he was all right. Yes, he's lost his left hand, so he's going to be all right. And I need to try and use that for Baron. <laughs> Except for I think he, I think he loses his left hand. Let's read and find out. Yeah, we'll have to find. We're out. only like five pages into a nineteen-page oh chapter, so, so. Then at last, Turin knew that doom had overtaken him, and that he had slain Brandir unjustly. I like how that's what comes to his mind first. Is that oh my god? I shouldn't have killed Brandir. I shouldn't like, have killed Brandir. That- Not oh my god! I <laughs> my sister. And she's carrying my child. I, I uh. guess that is the most recent one. Brandir's body is literally like right next to him. No, I imagine there's a, like there's a lot Babylon being like, here. "Oh no, everything of that he said was true." And then turn just like looking down at the corpse and just like, oh. "Yikes!" You were right. <laughs> Sorry, bro. My bad. Sorry about that. That was that was my bad. Now I need to process everything else that was said. And he really oh does. He really is like, I can't top this. I'm out. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, you know what? You know what? They got me with the incest. I'm out. You know what? I'm good. That was, a, that was a good plot twist. That was a good plot twist. I'll give, I'll give him that no one. I'll give him that one. I've become the most doomed individual. Yeah. And he, like, laughs to himself. And then he tells, he's, and then he, he tells Mablung, he's like, don't worry about it. Just go. <laughs> also, he curses Doriath for no good reason. He, 
<laughs> it's like he bade Mablon go and return to Doriath curse with Doriath, curses right. upon it. And it's like, dude, what did Doriath do to you? They were literally oh, going yeah, to forgive says, murder. And a curse too upon your errand. And yeah. Mablon was like, I don't understand anything of what has happened here. Because from Mablon's perspective, all he did was say like, oh yeah, your sister was um, under the spell, was you know hypnotized yeah. by the dragon and she ran away. I don't know what happened to your and, mom. Either. And then the next thing Turin says is... You know, he's having all these internal realizations, but he doesn't say any of them aloud. And so then all of a sudden, Mablon is just being like yelled at <laughs> and is like, a pl- you know, being told, you know, a plague upon your houses. And, and yeah, and the fact that he says, yeah, a curse to upon your ear. And he's like, F- you for coming here, because if you hadn't, I never would have found out. <laughs> I never would have known. Could have lived in bliss. I, ignorance, ignorance is bliss, is bliss man. <laughs> In the twilight of autumn, it sailed out of Mithland until the seas of the bent world fell away beneath it, and the winds of the round sky troubled it no more, and borne upon the high, and borne upon the high airs above the mists of the world, it passed into the ancient west, and an end was come for the Eldar of story and of song. The mm-hmm. end. The elves, they, again, the elves, they, they, they dwindle and they go out of uh, you know they 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 dwindle in in Valinor and they they wane and the um, men wax. It's the time of men in the fourth age. So hmm. I think I mean yeah. they've had they've had three ages. I think it's it's they've time. had more than three ages. We just started at the uh, in, in the uh, when the sun rises. That's the start of the, the f- first oh, age. But the okay, elves, so there's like a a zero ages, age. Ages. Yeah, they like the, the the years of the trees are uncounted technically. That doesn't count as age. The elves were there mm. um, before the trees. You know what I'm saying? Like that's pretty crazy scale of events. Um, that's all all started with uh, some darkness, and then music, and then uh, some trees, and then uh, a giant spider. I, I, I'm, I'm noticing that you, for somebody who doesn't like the Silmarillion, really, and you seem to know an awful lot, man. I, I I know vaguely. <laughs> I think I. That's the thing. I think I like I I have the gist of it now. You know what's funny? After finishing the Silmarillion, I thought I would feel a lot smarter, but honestly, I think my brain is mush. Now, 2022 was a big year for all of us, not just because I was finally eating my own words and reading the Silmarillion, but also because we were finally getting to watch the Rings of Power. Now, we had been hearing news about Rings of Power, and it hadn't—it didn't even have a name then. It was just the Lord of the Rings Amazon Prime show since before I started the podcast. In fact, I think right as I started the podcast, there was also this big announcement. It was like a really fancy video about all of the people who were going to be working on the show and just really building up a lot of hype to it. And for better or for worse, we all finally got to see it. Has to be Rod and Agnor. Yeah, Rod and Agnor. Rod and Agnor. Oh. All right, Chris. <laughs> Sorry. I love Chris you guys. Just on 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 Chris just I'm going to say it wrong. wrong but I I'm going to say it wrong forever. I, I refuse it's to. It's totally I, I, I The only person I have beef with with pronunciation is Colbert because he started it. Yeah. <laughs> let it go. <laughs> Never let it go. He who must not be named. You know <laughs> <It's> who. <fine. laughs> you know who. Oh, my God. I'm sitting there, I'm, no, I don't I'm sitting there standing guys. next to Chris when it happened. I'm like, but it's my, my, this is my friend he's attacking. Like, what do I do? <laughs> like, uh, I it's like, it's a playful like, beef. I really no, don't I, care I, that I, much. I, but it's so much It's so much fun to feign insult, you know? No, I know. You, can, you couldn't win that battle because of who he was and, and what he does. He was nobody was going to win that. Oh yeah, that no, position. no. It was, it was a set up for a joke. Yeah, People he's, like, he's you realize it was a joke, right? I'm like, no, I get that it was a joke and I'm fine <laughs> with it. I really am fine with it. We, we like, know you were right. It just, it makes good content though. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, over on my podcast, I am calling Fenduolos Fendi. I'm calling Maglin, Mag, whatever, Maggie. As you should, as you should. Don't put too much thought it's, into yeah, this. Yeah, it's, right? it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Well, well, I just like crazy. remember the characters honestly I because so many names get meanwhile, dropped. Meanwhile, I am still always mixing up Fingon and Finrod, and I d- I do that too, Mary. I do point. that too. <laughs> but Mary, let me just <laughs> that took a while. That doesn't sink in until like your second or third read through. Like it, it it's, it's cute okay. that you think I'll have a second read through. <laughs> Mary, Mary, yeah. your <laughs> map, your map hatred video triggered me. I just want you to know that <laughs> it triggered me, and I was like, little does she know. That is the best part of the book. Get no. a map. 
Get a man. And you, and that, you will, I'm telling you. I, I'm you, ending you this learn. conversation. That's right. how you okay, learn. We, we need to context. talk about this episode. We, That's how you will learn. Yes. Yes. No, we'll have it's to okay. continue okay. this for an after show episode Absolutely. or something. You, had, you said you found a map. Pay attention when they're doing it, and you'll be like, oh, now except I know everything. For, except for Angband is not even on the map. Well, it's right Children. above the map. It just, it's right above the map. It's right above the map. We know this. Kids, we know that the blank space is in. Mom and dad are calling in to stop to this fight. Chris, I. Separate it's... corners, kids. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, my God. Hal Brand. Oh, um, boy. I don't oh, care boy. if he turns out to be the most evil man on earth. I am in love with him. <laughs> He and, he and Galadriel have such good chemistry. It's such like, good chemistry. God. Such it's good chemistry. Wild. It's upsetting. Okay. I'm okay. like, you forget okay. she's supposed to be married to some other dude. <laughs> <laughs> My theory is that they're in an open relationship and mm. Celeborn is just sitting at home like reading and drinking tea because yeah. he's like, "You're, in, I love you, dear, but your energy is too much. Y- you can go explore the world. I trust that like eventually, you know, that we still love each other, but you can go live a life I'm going to stay here and like maybe read some it. books or something. And if you want to, you know, come back and say, hey, every now and then. <laughs> yeah, I'm really conflicted because technically, like we, we know that Celeborn is supposed to be in the mix, but they're just so, they're really setting up some kind of like enemies to lovers <laughs> right here. Very which much I so. am just like. Basically, that's the vibes they're giving. And I. Yeah. yeah. After this conversation with the queen and everyone, and he like negotiates for them to be able to stay a little bit and, mm-hmm. you know, buy them some time. He goes over to hug Ellen Dill yes. as a way of thanks. And I remember being like, that's weird. And even <laughs> Ellen Dill is like, this is weird. <laughs> uh, and it's because he was pickpocketing uh, Galadriel's knife. And so he like, as they're leaving, he like reaches his hand out for a moment of like, truce or something between them and it's like i just want peace like can you give me my peace for a bit and she's like fine so they grab hands and then he like pulls her closer and like swings the knife like Bro. into her arm Bro. and <laughs> stares at her and with this smirk and is like just in case you go around making more enemies than friends or, or something like I-, I was just like i really that hate might have been me. hotter yeah that might have been was... hotter than the doors yeah <laughs> like <laughs> I was, I was stunned. I was yeah. stunned into yeah. silence at yeah. that moment. I was yep. like, "Wow, y'all really." I was... really, I just really saw the writing on the wall for me. I'm mm-hmm. like, "Dang!" I really hope. I mean, he. Then the episode progressed. I'm like, "No, he is going to be a dark character." Dang, He's definitely this a is going to be rough for me. This is yeah. going to be rough for me. But yeah. I'm already here. I'm out here. It's already. fine. It's too late. <laughs> I don't. I mean, the thing is, is that because everyone is so hot, I almost just don't care anymore. <laughs> Um, speaking of meat, should we go to yes. elves, <laughs> the elven dwarven side of the story? Yeah. Durin continues to be a darling of the show. Yeah. More dwarves, please. That dinner scene when he was talking about the table <laughs> and like how sacred it is to the, I was like, he's 100% trolling them. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, and then someone tweeted a map <laughs> of Lindon to Kazan and is like, they have to carry they that, table that table 600 miles. And, and, but Doran makes sure to be like, because when Elrond was like looking upset and Doran was like, it's not that heavy. Like, it's not that big a deal. And then he's like, but then Elrond is like, oh, I have a different burden or whatever. But like they call out how heavy the table is. What a great, just so They're, great. Oh I my feel God. like the writers really understand the dwarves. Like. It's it's they, good. They, I think they really do. The dwarven stuff is just really sticking out and shining mm-hmm. for me. Bursts of water like exploding, the pressure building up and exploding out of the land in the village, and everyone's like, "What's happening?" <laughs> then it diverts into this mountain where underneath is a bunch of lava sitting dormant, and it ignites it, and we see. The most spectacular explosion that I was like, did they actually film a real volcano exploding? <laughs> I think there was one in Iceland recently, so it could have been. Could have been. Oh, my God. You're so right. Because I remember when that was happening, everyone on Twitter was like, um, have we checked? Has someone thrown a <laughs> ring into that recently? Like, everyone was making a bunch of Mountain Doom <laughs> jokes, you know. You just reminded me of another missed opportunity. Mountain Doom? Come on, Mountain Doom Code Red, Mountain Doom Baja Blast. Uh, 
why are all these brands dropping the ball? Let's go back in time to that would have been that would have been perfect for two thousands marketing too. All these like, gamers it, drinking Mountain Doom. Mountain, yeah, Mountain Doom, yeah. Oh, so good, so good. Um, yeah. So Mountain Doom explodes, and we see, you know, wh- like what I imagine, like Pompeii was like. Yeah. Um, just mass destruction, ash. It is funny everything. the w- the initial explosion, and surely there's more. It's going to be a continuous like firework, but the initial explosion shows like eight larger chunks of like flaming chunks off in different yeah. directions and diagonals and then they showed a village and the village gets hit with like 50 chunks so it is funny of like this poor village got for whatever reason decimated yeah, for whatever yeah. reason the volcano was aiming like any anywhere it exploded outward seemed to aim straight for that village um and this whole time galadriel is she, she just turns around and stares and just stands full force into this plume of of smoke and volcanic ruin. Um, and what's so what I love so much. So this image right here of her standing with her sword and like looking in horror at this thing. This is like the top. This was like one of the first images we saw from the the show be released there was like it was a vanity fair article released in like february i think and we've been looking at this for months and just who knew that this is what was happening in that picture and even the the previews with her covered in ash look incredible like the it just looks stunning so i'm very excited to see the next episode i'll i think i'll go with the moments between durin and elrond that's what I was thinking. Right before they're like opening the mine and they're having mm-hmm. like the conversation about, you know, Elrond, you know, reveals that he, you know, gave up the competition. Oh, it was so, yeah. so funny. Like, Dern is like, are you serious? Like, you didn't have any <laughs> trouble at all. And yeah. Elrond goes, I was winded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was putting on a show. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I really. Yeah, I love that. Again, again, just the dwarves are killing it, are mm-hmm. killing it. And specifically, like, that relationship that relationship between Durin and Elrond is just yes. so captivating, so sweet. It really captures that, like, um, just how Tolkien writes male friendships is just yeah. so special. This one's and so I, wholesome. And I feel like they really, like, those actors totally nailed that. Oh, and yeah. the dialogue they have and the way they look at each other and it's just like i just love any minute that they're I, on love screen all. Together. I love them all i love them all and it seems also in the fandom that is enjoying the show people who are shipping elrond and durin are mm-hmm. also shipping them with disa and having them be a thruple <laughs> yeah and disa needs to be there. <laughs> i appreciate that so much because a lot of times in, in fandom in general when mm-hmm. people are shipping things they cut out the the female partner mm. and you know in order to make it gay or whatever which yeah. like you know you you do you but a lot of times mm. that it's like okay but you just threw out this really great you know female character yeah. like Duran is in love with his wife yeah he's like, so and like definitely like that can't. doesn't you know <laughs> not count for anything and and so I love that it's almost like this little unspoken rule of like no if you're gonna ship Elrond and, and Duran you also have to ship yeah. Durin, Disa, and Elrond. Like mm-hmm. you have to ship them all together. Like it's yeah. a package deal. <laughs> it's a package you know? deal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my god, I love I love all their dynamics. It's just so wonderful and wholesome. Why was Sauron on a raft with some randos? Good question. Um, I don't know. We don't know that. I don't know. Because the plot had to happen. See, that's what. That's where I get mad about the whole how right. Sauron so th- thing. that's. The hardest part for me of this is that, like, he was just a dude on a raft and he, like, stumbled into our p- protagonist. Like, I don't, that that doesn't feel very um, well yeah. executed to me. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every, like, everything that happened, wh- it was all by happenstance. And, like, when know? he just was like, oh, I'm just, like, a regular, not evil guy on a raft. And then he, like, meets Galadriel and he's like, Cool, I'm gonna become the evil guy like, again. Well, he, like, oh, he ha- already knew he was Sauron. Like, he he had to have gone through that whole arc. Yeah, but I was just, yeah, just, like, wondering what, what was his plan, like, before Gladriel got on the raft? Like, yeah. what was he gonna do there? <laughs> Did he, like, 
have any control over that giant dragon that or maybe water yeah. monster that who knows is, uh, but and, and like happenstance is like okay in tolkien's world because it's happened before like the eagles coming is basically the biggest happenstance of all time and it keeps getting reused but that's like a there's like it's a very realistic story until or grounded story until we get to that kind of you know yeah de- deus ex machina um and um like but it just happens so often in this where it just kind of yeah. feels like lazy writing yeah uh, so the fake out at the beginning with the stranger possibly being Sauron, uh, as much as I didn't believe it, I was thinking that actually kind of might have been an interesting choice. Yeah. It's more interesting than Halbrand. Because the sure. opening line of the show, because I, I, I attempted to rewatch the entire season over again and I quickly gave up, but um, I got through the first episode again and the f- opening line is, nothing is ever evil in the beginning. And mm. I feel like if Sauron were to kind of come back in like this fresh form, kind of blank and not knowing anything that's going on, but he does have like this this power. I mean, obviously, I knew he was going to be a wizard because, but part of me was actually like kind of on board with that idea. And then he like gets yeah. abducted by these witches who teach him to be evil. Yeah, yeah. and then I'm, he I'm just gonna, maybe like disappears I'm gonna or something. I'm going to hit y'all real quick with my second Megamind reference of the episode. <laughs> when Megamind, <laughs> he's an alien from outer space, and he's on like an escape pod, um, <laughs> and he comes to Earth, and he lands in a prison, and that's how he mm-hmm. becomes evil, because he just like crash lands in a prison, and he's the prison's baby now. Oh my god, is Megamind <laughs> just an early adaptation of Rings of Power? <laughs> Megamind is Sauron. Oh my god, is Megamind on Amazon Prime right now? Do they have the rights to Megamind? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's definitely somewhere it's dreamworks let's talk about i'm sorry y'all i'm cutting this off so we can talk about more what else happens talk. in this episode <laughs> come back for a patreon episode about megamind i'm all over that don't threaten me with a good time Whew. definitely a lot of mixed feelings there about rings of power but definitely the best part was getting to talk about it with people live as it was happening and not on a podcast 20 years later. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much to people who are a part of the podcast. I've always said that the best part of this is like, forget Tolkien. The best part is getting to connect with people through Tolkien. And I look forward to another year of that, whether it's Tolkien or other things. Wink, wink. Just kidding. I don't know. Don't ask me yet. Please don't ask me. That's what I'm talking about as a proud member of WBNE. If you want to learn more about the network, you can go to WBNE.org. The cover art is by Vaishon Brandon. You can support him on Instagram at Vaishon Designs. You can get merch for That's What I'm Talking About by going to tpublic.com slash user slash Tolkien About Pod. You can follow the podcast on social media at Tolkien About Pod. And you can follow me on Twitter and TikTok at MC What's Up and on Instagram at MC Turn Down for What. If you want to support the podcast, you can become a patron. Go to patreon.com slash Tolkien About Pod to explore the different tiers and perks that are available. You can become a sponsor of the podcast like Christina. Christina, thank you so much for your continued support of the podcast. I appreciate it. And shout out to being the first sponsor of 2023. Here's to an exciting new year ahead of us all. A reminder that if you like what you're listening to, please make sure to rate and review. It helps the algorithms for new people to discover it. Uh, Chloe said, five out of five. Amazing. I absolutely love this podcast. It's so great. And Mary Clay is amazing. I started listening during the beginning of the pandemic, but fell off and I'm so happy to finally be caught up. Benching this podcast over the past couple months has been so much fun. Love, love, love. 10 out of five. Woo. Thank you so much, Chloe, for that woo right back at ya. Thank you again for a wonderful year of That's What I'm Talking About. Thank you to the patrons. Thank you to reviewers like Chloe. Thank you to all of my guests, including the ones that were featured in this episode. And of course, you, dear listener, thank you so much. I really feel like the commercial break right before an episode of Arthur would start. The real ones know what I'm talking about. And that's what I'm... Wait, wait. The real ones know what I'm talking about. And that's what I'm talking about. (laughs) 